<clears throat> Let's talk about PHP 8. Okay, let me get my headset on here real quick. Okay, cool. Can you guys hear me good? Yeah, better. Okay, great. All righty. Uh, so, Everybody um, see the screen? Right, let me get up my notes here. Yes. Perfect. Uh, just bear with me. Let me move this over here. All right. Um, perfect. All right. So, yeah, just uh, I kind of skipped a few. So, up this talk is about upcoming changes in PHP 8. Spent a bunch of hours digging through a lot of different articles and videos and RFCs to uh, compile this list for you here. So, hopefully, it's useful, and I'll be sure to uh, post the link as well in the meetup.com as well as the chat here when I'm done. So uh, the talk outline for tonight for this talk is just one going over the re release schedule for PHP 8. Uh, coincidentally, today they are cutting the beta 3 tag. I believe 15 days from now they'll be cutting the very first release candidate 1. And that's exciting. So we'll, we'll talk more about when PHP 8 is due. Then we'll be going on to the features of PHP 8, which will be a majority of this talk's uh, time will be spent in. We'll talk about all of the tons of updates, added features. Some of the stuff may kind of touch uh, 7.4 or was up for vote for 7.4, but didn't quite make it for 7.4 and was pushed to 8. So some of this stuff may look familiar, but was scheduled for eight. Then we'll talk about breaking changes. It is a major version up upgrade. Stuff's gonna break. So just take it's not too bad, honestly, though. It's uh should be pretty straightforward for a lot of the code out there that you might have. Then we'll go into the deprecations listed for 8.1. That is still an ongoing discussion. It hasn't been finalized, but most of everything there does not look very, um, I would say, used in the wild, at least from what I, I use from day to day. Then we'll just go over some of the resources that I use to compile this list. And at the very end, some shout outs for people who are awesome because they are living the open source life. It's not easy to not get paid uh, and contribute your time into something like this, but somebody's got to do it. So we'll talk about a couple of people who really need some free beer sent to them. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Joshua Copeland, Joshua Ray Copeland. I've been programming for over 12 years. I have over 10 years of PHP experience. Very beginning, I was dealing with PHP 4, and that was no fun. Then 5.3 came around, and that changed my life. But it took me a while before I actually got into frameworks, and then that was another life changer. Then Composer came, and that changed our lives, and so on and so forth. PHP has come a long way. But I come originally from like a C Sharp, Java, C++ background. I'm the CTO of Remote Dev Force, a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm the user group leader here for PHP Vegas, been for I think like five years, so keeping it going. I want to share my knowledge and everybody else who's kind enough to share their time to you know, talk about what they're passionate about as well. I'm a husband and father of two kids, love them to death, 
give me a reason to show off my kids right now to you. <laughs> and uh, I love skateboarding and uh, collecting uh, these uh, Yeezy shoes. Uh, I don't go crazy with it. My wife won't let me, but I, I get a pair here and there. And then uh, vintage stuff, anything old. I love it. And that's my beautiful wife. Just got back from Bryce Canyon out in Utah. It was fantastic out there. A little hot, but it is what it is. So Remote Dev Force, shameless plug. It's my company. We do mainly PHP development. I have a bunch of programmers who are awesome programmers that are mainly Laravel and Symphony based developers. We do, you know, freelance projects uh, for various clients. You can check out our website for more details on that. But if you're looking for either freelance or full-time development, definitely hit me up. I have my contact information here at the end. I either know someone or maybe I can hook you up with some side work. So release schedule. So basically with PHP 8, will be due for a release here at the end of the year. So November 26 is what it's scheduled for right now. And pretty much since uh, the PHP 5.4, 5.3 era, the releases have been on time and have been fairly, uh, you know, tested and solid. So I don't think that there'll be any delays here. But uh, right now, as it stands with the way that PHP does their life cycles on versions, there'll be two years of maintenance, and then there'll be another additional year of security patches. So that's typically how they do all of their versions and this maintenance on those. So this is from php.net supported versions right now. As you can see, if you're on 7.2 right now, you better be scrambling to get off because at the end of the year, they are going to uh, end of life that. Right now it is under only security issues. Will they go patch something? But after January, forget it. They're not gonna patch it unless you're probably paying for some third party to do it or something. But you need to be thinking about getting on the 7.3 or 7.4 here pretty quickly, which I actually am moving a client right now from 7.2. So that's fun. But the, the moral of the story here is upgrade often. You know, there, I've heard ton of horror stories. I have some myself, but one of the main ones being, uh, one of the worst ones I've heard is where someone went and updated, I believe this might've been a Windows environment, but updated the server, the workstation, uh, all the workstations got updated in the process of the server getting updated. They didn't check if the, re the requirements were met for the hardware for these things. And basically the new software update completely bombed out on not only the server, but all the workstations. So the entire company was down all day. And the reason it was all day and they couldn't revert this very quickly was because a file had changed during this update that was a library file. So they went and they needed to go restore their backups but they've never actually tested their backups. So when they went to do that, it took almost three hours or whatever it was to export the backup because it had to export the entire directory. They couldn't just pull down one file. So make sure your team, your company, you have some sort of normal schedule and procedure to go update you know, PHP or any language you're using so that way you don't have this nightmare every five or 10 years making a whole bunch of changes to try to scramble to upgrade your stuff because 10 to one, that's definitely gonna cause some issues. So just the way with semantic versioning working, this is kind of like a you know neat little emoji I found from one of Sebastian's talks on PHP 8, but uh, it, I think it actually comes from someone's Twitter post, but it's I like it. <laughs> The way that you can think of major, minor, and patch versions, and Laravel doesn't work this way. I think it uses romantic versioning or something. Maybe they're changing that. I'm not sure. But with PHP, you know, right now we're on 749. So that first, that seven is your major version. 
then you've got your minor version and your patch version. So, you know, the major version, oh my God, everything's gonna break, scary face. You got your features, which is the dot part in the middle there for, you know, hey, we're getting new stuff, cool. And then the patch, hey, something's broken, security or something like that. So check your logs for deprecations. This can be done pretty easily. Just go in your PHP INI, flip this little bugger over to negative one, and you will start to see all kinds of fun stuff, I'm sure. Uh, I know I do anyway. So there's a beta downloads page. If you are inclined to wanna go check it out, you can either go to the GitHub or the archives on php.net and download that. Uh, this is the GitHub, kind of surprised there's only 750 something odd contributors. So if you do not see, you should go contribute. I'm looking into it myself. So features of PHP 8. There's, I think quite a bit there's there's a lot of features with PHP 8, but as far as performance is concerned, you're not going to get the same boost as we did with upgrading uh, from five to seven. So eight, there are some cool things that could give you some boosts in speed. There are some pretty neat features that are in there, but it's nothing like the upgrade we have with seven. So just kind of an asterisk on that. <clears throat> So the biggest change, in my opinion, anyway, is the JIT compiler. We'll go into each one of these in more detail here in a minute. But I've met uh, Zev and Dimitri myself at a ZenCon, and those guys are really sharp guys. And I'm sure everything they they built in this JIT compiler is definitely going to add a lot of performance for PHP, but you'll see here in a second why it's not gonna help your average web application. So attributes is also another major upgrade that we've got, named arguments, match expressions, throw expressions. Someone mute themselves, I'm, I'm not sure, someone just unmuted and throw me off a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. This is from my side. Yeah. I just want to know what is the JIT compiler? Uh, and, um, well, can you explain what is meant by JIT? Yeah, yeah. We'll get into that here in a minute. Yep, I've got a whole a couple of slides on that. Thank you. Absolutely. So there's union types. There's a new uh, static return type. There's union types, which is pretty cool. We'll get into that here in a minute. And then there's mixed types. So these eight here are your big feature upgrades for PHP. And I think they're all great. We didn't get generics, unfortunately, but getting generics is gonna take a heck of a lot of work. So who knows when that's gonna come. But as of now, these are really cool updates. Uh, and we'll go over each one of those here in a minute in detail. So there's also a whole bunch of other kind of updates that have come along with this. There's constructor property promotion. We'll get into that. Inheritance with private methods, weak map implementation. You can call class now on objects, the null safe operator. You can not actually define a variable when you're catching exceptions now. You, you can uh, put a comma at the end of parameter lists and closures, which is pretty cool now, just like arrays. Creating date time objects from an interface. There was some weird oddities between date and mutables uh, before, but now they've cleaned that up. There's a stringable interface now. We'll get into that. There's a stir contains function. Thank you, finally. I don't have to use stir pause, right? Stir starts with, stir ends with, also great additions. Heck, if we're adding stir contains, might as well add those. fdiv, we'll get into that. Debug type, resource ID, those are maybe not gonna be used too much, but are pretty cool. Getting away from some old style kind of stuff. There is an abstract method traits fix that might break your code if you're not doing something right. And there's objects with get uh, token get all underneath the hood stuff, probably not gonna be too useful unless you're doing like crazy stuff. 
variable syntax tweaks, we'll very lightly touch on that. Type annotations for internal functions, we'll touch base on that. And the extension for JSON is now built in the PHP. So as someone just asked, what is the JIT compiler? So the reason I have this little fractal image here is because there is a video there out on YouTube of Zev performing a performance test with the just-in-time compiler. Oops, kind of skipped a few. But basically, the just-in-time compiler uh, stands for, you know, basically taking the PHP and then building that out into machine code, right? So you probably know PHP is an interpreted language. It's not compiled like C, Java, or Rust program is. Instead, it's translated to machine code. So the stuff that the CPU understands, right? JIT is a technique that will compile parts of the code at runtime so that the compiled version can be used instead. So there's a so-called thing called the monitor. And what it does is it looks at your code as it's running. The monitor detects parts of your code that is re-executed over and over. It will mark these parts of your code as warm or hot. And depending on the frequency that it gets called, these hot parts of your code will get compiled as optimized machine code. And then it gets used on the fly instead of having to look at the PHP and turning that into machine code every time. So the op cache kind of does something similar to this, but it's not, it's not as proficient as a JIT compiler can do this. So this is great for code that's ran over and over again. So think of maybe a worker that pops something off a queue and has a very CPU intensive, you know, hash function or something like that. The JIT compiler is going to add some good speed boost to that. However, with web applications, you know, we, we don't have that same CPU cycle or same thing that's happening on the code every time different requests comes in, different headers, different, everything's different, you know, with different uh, clients making requests against your API or whatever, maybe your website. So, you know, uh, your web application may not see that much, but if you're building something outside of a web application, PHP now opens up more possibilities to people looking for a fast language to build something like, you know, that could you know, churn through hashes, math, functions, whatever, something that's repetitive and open up PHP to being much more proficient compared to like Python, Go, Rust, some of these other languages out there. And JIT can become improved over time. If you are interested in JIT compilers, you can check out this free Mozilla course on JIT compilers. Uh, if you're willing to, uh, you know, kind of go through that, but that's, you know, not just native to PHP, any interpreted language sort of thing can benefit from that. So like I mentioned, some of the downsides, uh, the very first one is, is the JIT compiler, it's a compiler, right? That's, com you know, if you ever wrote your own compiler, um, you know, there's some simple examples out there, but like compiler theory is very complicated. So this this whole change has added a lot of code and people were kind of nervous, honestly, accepting this. So when a bug pops up, updates are gonna take some time probably. Cause right now the bus factor is probably Dimitri, Zev, and maybe a handful of other people who are nice enough to contribute their time to fixing things that pop up. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, the JIT compiler is not really going to help your web applications. But workers, CPU intensive stuff, this will definitely help out. So, sorry. But there are a lot of other cool features, like attributes, that have come with PHP. So attributes is kind of the other big change that's happened in PHP 8. It's commonly known as annotations in other languages, but essentially it's a way to auto tie objects to variables, constants, functions, classes, methods, a lot of different places. 
So instead of having to parse some doc blocks, so think of doctrine, for example, or um, you know, uh, uh, eloquent, whatever. You uh, typically with like a variable like the ID on a entity, you're having to put all of these comments above a variable, and the comments have this annotation in there, and there's this reflection stuff that has to happen, and some people coming from other languages kind of cringe when they see that comments are driving functionality for the code. So this ditches that. You know, this essentially allows us to use attributes as actual objects that are attached in a more language specific way. So won't have to parse comments and doc blocks anymore. And I think probably will be a little bit faster in the long run. So ORMs and a lot of other things are going to benefit from this a lot. But this uh, double at, uh, there was a lot of drama about this. If you didn't see, this is pretty much the big talk about PHP 8 right now was that this got accepted as the syntax, but then like somebody noticed like, hey, what about problems with the current at usage for suppressing errors or uh, back, you know, forwards compatibility, all these, all these different discussions kind of came up and bringing up, okay, you know, what's the actual uh, best case that we can do for this new type of attribute syntax? So there was another RFC that got thrown onto addendum and this is already after like PHP is already getting developed. So this was all very, very, very recent. So there was another revote. Here are all the different syntaxes that you can see here. So basically the one that got accepted here is your hashtag um, bracket. And I actually think that's probably the best because what's kind of neat about it is before PHP 8, it was considered a comment anyway, the hashtag was. So technically you could start putting the syntax for this stuff in place before you, you upgraded to 8 and then things would start to work. Um, I'm sure there was some other arguments about this. I, I, to be honest, didn't dive too much into it, but just know that now that is the final kind of uh, syntax that was approved. There was a post literally yesterday that Derek Revens um, did when the uh, vote went through. So I went ahead and I kind of made some example examples for you guys and pulled some from the RFC too. So think, of, like I said, here's a doctrine example. Now, instead of actually having to throw comments, which unfortunately the the syntax thing still thinks they're comments, but imagine that they don't look like they're comments. Now they'll be uh, looking at these objects and calling the constructor on them and passing whatever you have here into the constructor and using the value of whatever's underneath it uh, to basically attach to. So think of event listeners and stuff like that, which we'll kind of get into some examples there. So creating attribute classes, like I mentioned, is uh, something like this. You, If you want to create a new attribute, you would say, hey, this is an attribute. And then you have to put a target. So essentially, you have to say where your attribute can be used. So if it can be used on a method or a function, you can use the bit or operator like I do here with this little um, pipe. So I can say, hey, it's usable on a method or a function. I've got all these flags. As you can see here, there's class, function, method, property. This little one down here I separated because it's different. It tells whether you can repeat the attribute. So if it's something that like whatever you wanted to have it called twice, you could very well group this twice and have it call the attribute twice with the value. But if you uh, but you have to mark it with is repeatable. Otherwise, there's an error that gets thrown. 
there are a whole bunch of different variables you can pass into uh, attributes. You know, there you can do bit shifts and all kinds of stuff before the value actually is heading into it, constants, other things like that. But, you know, um, I, I have a feeling that, you know, they're, it's still probably going to be a little rough in the beginning. There may uh, be some problems that come up with maybe, you know, converting doctrine to use this or whatever. So we'll see. I'm, I'm sure there'll be another RFC to improve attributes as we go along. So again, this opens up the ability to add core attributes. So imagine being able to mark your class as, yeah, hey, like use a JIT compiler for this because I'm pretty sure it's going to run a heck of a lot faster. It's a CPU intensive class. Or, hey, this is deprecated. Do not use this class. Uh, you can throw some functionality in there that will spit out logs or or whatever. Now you just don't need to rely on your comments. So there'll probably be a whole bunch more that eventually come out. So this is going to be big, I think. Well, big in a passive way for PHP anyway. So here's like an event listener example. This is kind of before attributes so you can see here we have this huge array here at the top of all of our different events and then you know uh down here we have each event getting passed in but depending on the type of event that happens now after you can kind of consolidate this code a bit get rid of that array at the top quit having to scroll up and down or hop to different files to see which events are listening to what and what's wired to what it's right there in the code. And it is literally running the event listener code right there. You know it's running because it's a language construct now. So uh, pretty neat. Uh, I hit the wrong button there, sorry. Yeah, so anyway, um, we, we this would be using the sus subscribes to attribute and we would be passing in different essentially events to listen to. And this would be like our, our subscriber that would subscribe this function to get called when this event is fired. So here are some named arguments. Uh, that is a new update in PHP. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but that's not my place to give my opinion right now. This is a new update that allows you to call functions methods with the name of the variable. So in this example, we have A, B, C, D, where C and D is null. We can now call it, uh, B, D, A, in whatever order we want. We can skip defaulted values. So we never define C here in this example. So again, I'm, I imagine for some uh, more complicated functions, this might, be a little dodgy if you don't have good naming conventions. But take this set cookie, for example. I mean, I can even think of an example myself with like caching. But, you know, hey, you know, this has name value expires. You know, we need to set the name and we want to set expires. But let's say we wanted to just dodge setting the value for cookie for now. Well, now we can. We don't have to pass in empty string for the second value. We can just call set cookie name colon the value expires colon the value, uh, and all is good. But before the old way, you always had to in order define everything. So pretty neat. This is uh, using an example of the construct promoter but I'll get into that update here in a little bit. But this is also using the named arguments example. So, uh, oops. so in this, you can see we're passing in name, email, age, and you know that can come from a variable. It can come from you know doing something more complicated, like we'll get here in a second with erratic functions. But right now. Uh, there's even a way, and again, this is why I'm a little indifferent. I'm not sure about this. This could open up problems, but 
take the bottom left example, we're taking the very first element where we did not have to define an index for it. So Brent, it gets passed in as the very first parameter to customer data. So essentially here, name would get Brent. We didn't have to define name as the key. So that works, but if you do it the other way where let's say Brent was at the bottom of this array and it didn't have a key for that value in the array, that would break. The only way you can pass in something without a key is if it's one of the first elements in the array. A little weird, but again, you know, you can do that. I wouldn't. If you do have a, a variable that it's not known, like you pass in the wrong name when you're calling this name argument stuff, it's going to blow up the world. So it's going to throw an error. So again, this is this triple dot is the veratic function. This takes an array and explodes it out to the elements that get called in the um, method, or in this case, the constructor. So just a little another example here. We're creating the customer data, and we're passing in these three. And then here we've got a static function with the triple dot, which is the veratic function to expand the args. So args in this case would be this array. So you know we're passing that in and that kind of gets converted over to that named parameter style of uh, calling the, the constructor here. So could be kind of a shortcut and maybe a better way for things that have a ton of options there's like 50 different things, maybe now it makes more sense to make your constructor more complicated and having more parameters because you can just pass array in now or something like that. But, uh, you know, with having uh, out to like skip a bunch of stuff. So we'll see how it gets used, but this is not valid. You can't define a key and then pass that string, uh, that, that variable as the key of a named argument. So do not do that, that will error out. The named arguments on this example, we have a parent that is implementing this event listener. You can change the name of the variables, so that's fine. But if you call the names from the interface, it's gonna blow up. You need to call what the parent's showing. So this match match expression thing is another cool thing. It basically allows us to have cleaner switch expressions. So in this example, we have match input. So it's like a number, right? Pass that in. If it's zero, the value that gets returned is hello. That is now result. Or if the value is one, two, or three, we'll get world. So now instead of having to put case one, two, three in a switch and then have that return world, you can now use this match uh, expression and also supports defaults as well if nothing matched. So pretty cool, a lot more cleaner than switches. Uh, perhaps with more complicated switches, you'd still want to use a switch. So switches aren't going away. There's also a static return type now. So instead of the kind of old school, you know, hey, this is returning a static, but you can't really say on here static. Now you can actually type hint that it is going to return an instance of itself. So that's cool. That gets rid of doc blocks if, if you don't want, like in this case with union type. Before, let's say we want to allow string and int as the input value for this. Well, you couldn't. I'd have to choose string or int. I couldn't have both as the value for input. Now with the recent update, PHP 8, we have union types. So you can use a pipe and you can separate all your different ones that way. Pretty swanky. Mixed types. Oh. My thing uses all the things. 
So I'm going to put mixed. I'm sure if you've used PHP Storm, you're familiar with mixed because I think that's what it defaults when like you don't put something in or it detects that. So now we can ditch this doc block if it's something simple like it says valid. Why do we even need this doc block when the code is self-documenting? So now we can add this mixed here into is valid, uh, is valid as the type hint. But why do we even need the comments? This thing is super simple. Doesn't need to explain what the function is doing. It's just doing like one line of code. Let's just ditch that all together, right? So I can imagine future code looking like this, where you just see is valid and the code is self-documenting, right? Um, at least that's like, I think some people's hope. So here on the right, that's what mixed is. Mixed is an array, bool, all of these different things. So it can be useful if, if you're passing in kind of who knows sort of thing. This I was talking about earlier, constructor property promotion. Pretty cool. This is old. Everybody knows that this was a pain. Having to define all this stuff, putting in all these things into the constructor, having to assign everything in the constructor, accidentally putting A instead of Z, the nightmare. We like to be, you know, proficient, AKA lazy. So this is what your code's gonna start looking like if you wanted to use this feature. This does everything on the left now with PHP 8. So we, de we can define all of our property methods, and it already automatically assigns those property uh, parameters, excuse me, those property parameters to these uh, parameters being passed into the constructor. You don't have to go and define them anymore. So pretty nifty if you're into writing rapid code. There's now inheritance, uh, uh, a fix, I should say, for inheritance of private methods before there was a fatal error if you uh, if you tried to do this, but essentially it would say you can't override a final method, but by definition, you can't override a private function or method. So you, uh, this was kind of like wrong to begin with with what it was saying. So now there's a warning that gets generated. It just says private methods can't be final as they are never overridden by other classes anyway, right? So a little change there. Weak map implementation, pretty cool. I can see this being used in Doctrine and other ORMs. This uh, was kind of introduced, I think, in 7.4, but didn't have an implementation. Now there's an actual built-in implementation in PHP 8. But essentially, if you look at this example, there's uh, this cache object here. And then we have double question mark equals, which is the null coalesce operator equals which basically does kind of what the null coalesce does, but then you know assigns the value to itself sort of thing if it does have a value. So in this case, if cache obj had a value, we would use that. If it didn't, then compute something expensive would then get assigned to cache. And with this weak map implementation, let's say a whole bunch of stuff, we did like a whole bunch of queries. It was a huge job, you know, 10 gigabytes later, this, this script is starting to run out of space. The garbage collector starts to kick in. This weak map tells PHP's garbage collector, hey, if you want to ditch stuff in this, go for it. I don't care. So it's a way of kind of like, if you don't need the data 100%, you, uh, PHP can garbage collect it. You can call class on objects now. This is cool. You know, you don't have to call get class function anymore. There's the null safe operator. I like this one. This above is before. You had all this code, like get me the date. Okay, is the date a date? If it is a date, give me the time. Now you can just put this question mark in between a method call. And if get start date is null, it won't call that method and blow up. I'm sure you, some of you are aware of that hitting that issue, so pretty neat update. Non-capturing catches. On the left, you always had to define a variable for the exception, but if you don't need the exception, then why even define it? So now PHP allows that. 
you can have something uh, catch it, but you don't actually have to assign a variable to its value. Trailing commas. So see here, we've got a comma at the end of the function parameter. That's not like a syntax error anymore. And also for the, uh, the closure, there was an RFC added to fix that as well. So now you can have trailing commas in PHP. I, you know, at first I was kind of against uh, that, I was in, but honestly, it doesn't really change anything. So I don't know why I was against it. It's just more of like, I like to be OCD with my code. So uh, another thing added is uh, this little date time immutable thing. If you wanted to juggle between uh, date time to uh, date time immutable, or excuse me, or the other way around, things were a bit tricky. So now they have these new methods create from interface. So essentially you can, you know, you can create a daytime object from a daytime immutable, but when you use the create from daytime or create from immutable uh, and you would do it the other way around, uh, you know, there wasn't really any clear way to do that. So by adding this create from interface on both the daytime and daytime immutable, there's now a generalized way to convert from daytime to daytime immutable objects. There's also a new stringable interface. This can be used to type in anything that implements the underscore underscore to string method. So whenever class implements that to string method, it automatically implements this interface underneath the hood. So there's no need to manually implement this. As long as your class is calling that, it is now considered a stringable, uh, you know, extending that interface. So it can be useful. This stir contains function, like I mentioned in the beginning, I love no need now to do this crazy stuff where you have to do stir pause and then checking false, all this. You just do stir contains and get back a nice clean bowl of value. There's uh, the start and ends with pretty straightforward. Hey stack, hey, you know, hey stack, hey, you know, that would return true, true for the bottom one too. So can easily check strings with those now. The fdiv function, this allows you to do uh, divide by zero, essentially, before div would, I think, blow up. So following kind of what they did with fmod and int uh, div functions, this allows you to do that. And if you do divide by zero, you'll get back this inf, negative inf or not a number, depending on the case. Get debug type function. This allows you to essentially, uh, you know, so, something like get type would do, but now instead of just returning object, it will return the class name. So can be useful if you are doing that sort of thing on objects for whatever reason. This is the get resource ID function, you know, like with MySQL connections or file handles, you used to have to cast it to an int, which is kind of that old way up there. And then now you can just call this get resource ID and you'll get back an int. So just a little cleaner way of, of getting a, an ID for the resource. There's PHP token objects now with this get token all function. I'm not gonna dive into this, I think, uh, it's just more for if you're messing around with actual, like the PHP code interpreter. There's a bunch of variable syntax tweaks. Honestly, a lot of them are just small cases and like really crazy, I think complicated things I haven't really seen, but uh, there, this addresses a lot of small fixes for those. Type annotations uh, for internal functions now in all the extensions, uh, there's still a bunch of extensions I think they need help on, but it's kind of long overdue to add a bunch of uh, type hinting or uh, type annotations, I should say. So that way, when you're looking at these functions, like in PHP Storm, and you finally dive into some of these deeper functions actually built in the PHP or the extensions, you can get some better 
documentation. And like I mentioned, ex the extension for JSON now is always compiled in. So uh, I don't think com uh, Composer is going to complain about that anymore with PHP 8. Uh, some breaking changes that are coming through. Again, they're not too bad. I think uh, all in all, you should probably be pretty good. Uh, but there are a few to look out for. One, if you have a trait, but when you implemented that trait, uh, or excuse me, a trait with an abstract function, and you implemented that abstract function, but you didn't follow the type hinting exactly, before PHP 8, it did not check the type hinting correctly. Now they've fixed that. So that could potentially break things if you're using a strict um, mode for PHP. The PHP 4 style constructor is gone. If you're doing this, you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, that has not been the way to do constructors for a long time. Use under underscore contract. Calling non-static methods with a static call, you could do that. I didn't know that until I saw this, but you can. Uh, you And they obviously said that's a bad idea and that's going away. Like not deprecated, this is going away. This is disappearing. It was already marked deprecated before. So you should have had a long time to stop doing that. Unset casting is gone. Before, again, another one I didn't know you could do. You could actually call unset as a cast type and that would unset the value. Uh, that does not work anymore. You should be calling unset as a uh, function. Error tracking changes coming through. There's a track error ZINI config that was removed, meaning that PHP error message as a variable is no longer available. So originally you could flip that on and then you can use this error message thing of this variable, which magically come out of nowhere to track errors. Don't do that. If you need to use this error get last, but 10 to one, you should be using exceptions to capture errors. Do not try to be looking at error message strings. Make things throw exceptions. Case insensitive constants, I didn't know this either, but you can declare constants as case insensitive. That third argument here is going bye-bye. So what you pass in is the value for the constant now. Undefined constants, if you did var dump and foo, for example, uh, it would create a string with foo in the name, and that's what basically would happen uh, prior to 7.2. Now, after 7.2, a deprecation warning, but it still creates that string value uh, you know, with your unknown constant, essentially, that wasn't defined. Now it blows up, hey, fatal error, like this is an undefined constant that you're trying to call. So that could, that could break some stuff. That's probably more likely to cause issues. Another thing that probably hasn't been done for a while, but uh, maybe with old libraries, if you are using any, uh, is the autoload magic function here. That would override all of the autoloader um, classes though. So essentially it would, like overwrite everything else that was already autoloaded. You should be using SPL autoload if you do have like, I guess a um, library or something you maintain that uh, does have that. So just uh, another thing that's being removed. There was also this create function function and uh, that's going bye-bye. You know, you should be calling you know, creating anonymous functions essentially like this, closure. There's used to be an each function that's going away. Uh, the old school way of doing a for each before each was around might have been using an each. So it could have very well looked like what's on the left here. Uh, but now with for each, uh, your life is much easier. So hopefully you won't run into this, but this could be a pain to refactor if you are doing some tricky stuff. Array indexes with negative integers. Take this example, negative five is our key, foo is our value. And we add two to this array, two values, bar and fuzz. Prior to PHP 8, 
it would just go to zero and then continue from there. And now going forward from PHP 8, it will start wherever your negative number was. So this could also bring some stuff perhaps. But now it goes negative five, negative four, negative three. So however you add it. But if you don't define the key, that's that may change on you. E all and display errors have changed a little bit just on their defaults. So the default now is E all. So everything's going to get included more than before. And then display startup errors is turned on because people used to get white screens of death after installing extensions or whatever. And they'd be like, why is it broken? And now it tells you why it's broken because that's turned on. So it's probably a good thing, especially for new developers who hate on PHP all the time, maybe. <clears throat> so getting towards the end here, deprecations. There's uh, no deprecations that I can necessarily see that they tagged for 8.0. Uh, I think that's by design. But they're targeting some for 8.1. So they're still in discussion, like I mentioned. And here are the list of the different things that are getting deprecated. Like I said, this is still an ongoing discussion, but none of these that I can tell I'm using. So probably not a big deal. Maybe some of the file constant stuff, maybe you need to check out. If you are still using um, the MB check encoding uh, without an argument, that could be an issue. Um, key current next pre uh, pre previous you know those sort of things could become a problem but other than that i think uh the deprecations you know that are coming down shouldn't be too bad so i'll be sure to post this these slides so you can grab these resources later but essentially uh what i kind of wanted to just throw out there is since php is moving in this more type safe environment you should check out uh, Psalms, which is basically a type hint or type checking um, tool. It's one of the best tools out there for that. So just like Raj mentioned, you know, use some webhooks that call that um, and whatever. Check your code, right? Have it automatically check your code and lint lint your code, um, and that very well can find issues right out of the box. Grow if you're doing it wrong. If you build a library and you want to be really strict about people not using it correctly due to bad typing, then you can do that. And when somebody uses your library wrong, it will not install the library. It just blows up on Composer install. So that's like really strict, but avoids maybe bad um, issues being entered into your GitHub. <laughs> Um, and don't, if you use don't, you can implement that on your objects and essentially uh, tell it, hey, deny things like magic methods um, or other dodgy code um, that can't be used on your objects. So a way of kind of protecting your code. There's also some shims out there for some of this stuff uh, that we mentioned, some of these new functions. So if you want to like start prepping, you could very well do that. Sebastian Bergman's talk on how to get re ready for PHP 8 is great. I really like his talks. He's fantastic. He built PHP unit. Shout out to him. Uh, Brent's articles on Stitcher talking about all the recent updates to PHP 8 are like golden. That's pretty much where a lot of the resource uh, from this talk has come from. So definitely check out uh, those articles. And php.net and the RFC wiki, uh, if you want to see what's coming down the pipeline, go check that out. And Reddit's PHP subreddit is also awesome. PHP Mentors is a book that I'm mentioned in. Uh, I've got like a section there on my different like kind of things I do day to day. So if you are interested, go take a look, download an e-copy of that. And there's a whole bunch of great people in there. Uh, giving their recommendations on uh, how to write good code. So some shout outs, just uh, wanted to add this last slide. We're kind of over time here a little bit, so I'm, I'm gonna just rush through. But Sarah Goldman, Gabriel, Dimitri Zev, Nikita, 
uh, Derek, all awesome people. These are the people that are behind PHP 8, PHP. They're amazing. They're awesome. I can't uh, stress enough how cool uh, these people are. So you should thank them. There's a whole bunch of other people I'm sure I forgot to mention and shout out to them too. <laughs> so does anybody have questions before we kick into the uh, giveaways? A lot of interesting things. Uh, yeah. So, looks like uh, I'm more interested in the JIT. I think some maybe uh, super fast um, with the command line uh, tools that I already have with the PHP uh, CLI. Yep. We'll see. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, oh. it's, it's something about CLI um, and PHP. What was that? Okay. Um, yeah, appears uh, PHP CLI will be faster with the PHP eight. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you said that um, the JIT will not may have big impact on the web app, but with the CLI tools, right? Is yeah, that, for sure. Yeah, uh, that's not exactly a hundred percent. It's anything that's CPU intensive and math computational, because if it can compile it down, it will just make it like as fast. Essentially, it should be technically as fast as C, but they're still gonna have to bake in a lot of PHP lot or a lot of uh, PHP's base types in there too. So it could be a bit of a bloated binary. But um, the JIT compiler, at least from my understanding, is anything that's going to do math should speed up. So if you have like your like a really bad case for PHP is like uh, machine learning. If you were doing like on the fly machine learning, that would get JIT compiled in a in a heartbeat because it should pick that up, and that part would speed up but not necessarily like your web forms or displaying a web page or any of that. And I think I was mentioning like, um, you know, like queues, hey, workers, some of that stuff may speed up. Um, but yeah, like uh, if it's definitely tied to like dynamic stuff um, that changes, yeah, it may, it may not have that um, good of a, a speed improvement, but I imagine there will be hot parts of the code for some of that stuff that do get compiled down to JIT. But um, again, that requires a monitor to kind of notice. So that that new attribute function, when you can mark something as JIT, might help also to kind of just say, I know this is going to be a hot part of the code, so let me just mark it. Um, 